method of business would persist until the formation of the National Wrestling Alliance in 1948. The NWA as a central governing body, with its singular, undisputed world champion, would be absolute and undeniable. This control, combined with the expansion of the interstate highway system, and the inevitable popularity and availability of regional television, would usher in an era of wrestling that was defined by what would come to be known as the territory system. The territory system would dominate wrestling for nearly four decades while the borders, authority, popularity, and obedience of individual NWA territories was in a near constant state of flux, to this day the impact and influence of these territories is still felt. Each territory had its own signature promoter and star. While it is impossible to cram these characteristics into a static, concrete map, we are damn sure going to try anyway. So open up your eyes. It's Thursday, and it's another round of the 30. I'm your host, Mike Monty, and we've got a panel of pro wrestling experts the world oh. doesn't even know about. These guys are the greatest <laughs> pro wrestling experts. But let me first introduce the champion who had an all-time record last week, Dan from the Dan and Benny in the Ring Show. How are you, Dan? I'm good. Looking forward to it. I know my uh, score from last week will go up there with uh, Nolan Ryan's strikeouts and wow. Kyle Rickon's streak. <laughs> things we'll never see broken in the history of sports and entertainment. So, Well, I got to tell you, you brought it last week, and you brought it hard. I mean, I was thoroughly impressed. And then there's Mr. Second Place. <laughs> oh. Joe, you What's bring up? it every week, dude. You just fall short. What's going on there, brother? I am the SD Jones of the 30, that is for sure. Hopefully, sometime soon I can get the Duke because, you know, Gorilla Monsoon Jr. up there has got the belt. I'm coming after him tonight, though. Well, I got to tell you, man, I'm getting a little tired of people saying I'm rigging this thing, all right? I'm sorry. You know what? If you fail, you fail on your own. I will take no responsibility for it. I just try to call it down the line the best I can. And, Joe, you've done a great job. By the way, where's Bruce? ESO. He's not in here? Oh, I guess he's out this week. What happened there? Must be from creative. that last interview last week I, I, I that he Bruce jacked today. up on me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Anyway, Bruce, I'm only kidding. No, I'm not really. You, hey, hey, hey week, Monty, why okay. is the title on uh, Mr. Presidente up there? What's going on? I want to reach for it right now. Uh, you know what? I don't know why. Yeah, I guess uh, I guess Bruce didn't update the uh, <laughs> the the, uh, in my hand. the the graphic. Is, yeah, is this an Antonio Noki Bob Backlund situation where it you be. know it's unrecognized it and that's it? And we're just going to move on. What's All up right. with that? He 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 won it in a tournament in Rio. <laughs> Rio. <laughs> And let me get to the whiner of the group, the player. How are you, player? Uh -oh. Are you going to whine today or what? Yeah, that's why I'm wearing a fish shirt. A lot of fishy shit going on around here. Look at him. <laughs> oh, my God. Just constantly <laughs> complaining. Listen, dude, if if you can't answer questions out of 1964 in pro wrestling, I can't help you, bro. There's only <laughs> right. a few questions right. I could hit in 1950 to 1964. Yeah. A lot of stuff going year. on back then. Well, I guess his mic isn't working either. You got your mic there? Play or what? Uh -oh. oh, yeah. All right, good. And there he is, one of the best-looking guys in pro wrestling, the president. 
Woo-hoo. How are you, sir? Good to be here. Great to yeah. be here. Yeah. Stuff to the gills, wolf down supper, and uh, the brain is working slowly, but we'll see what we can do tonight. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm RJ, Hups- RJ Hudson said that ESO got a job with AEW. Who's that? No way. Who? ESO. Bruce got a job really? at AEW. What's he doing? Security or? No. You know what? Whatever he's doing, that means AEW should close its doors in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> maybe, he's, maybe he's using those great interview skills and he'll be the guy interviewing. <laughs> he'll sit there with a microphone so, staring off at the space and be like, oh, yeah, you. Um, question. So, so you're, you're, you're saying ESO is going to be the devil. Is that it? He may be. Could you imagine that would be a letdown? That's what's wrong. He's going to wow. come back next week with his lips all puckered up. Just saying. Wow. Dude, I got to tell you, before we get going, so yeah, it looks like Jimmy should be returning to the show next week, I think. Uh-oh. Um, yeah. We've been discussing it, so the return of Jimmy over the internet. But, you know, it's funny. We get a lot of love out there, but um, every so often we'll get haters, man. And I'll tell you, it's, it's – I, I don't know. It's 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 kind of rough in this little podcast television world, you know. Some people Hitters. say you're great, and the other people say, "Boy, you guys suck." And I'm oh, like, just no like, I just don't. Get the next girlfriends, probably. Yeah, who that's knows? envious. You know, they're in the basements. That's why. That's what's going on. My question you is, know? where's where's their podcast? Yeah, well, there you go. Let's not say that we we've already got enough bad podcasts out there. Let's not add <laughs> into it. True, please. <laughs> The, uh, Br- Benny, you're just asking for more pain out there. Everywhere I turn, it's like if I have to listen to another armbar question on the internet, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. <laughs> all right, guys, let's go. Oh, boy. We have all a little right. late start. That's all right. The champ is going to start this one up. Dan, Uh-oh. if you can repeat right. like last week, I I got to tell you, that was very impressive. All right, settle down, settle down. Jeez. Settle down. Sell down now. <laughs> Is Dirty Dominic Mysterio the MVP of the WWE this year? You got a minute and 30, Dan, to explain why a why he is not the MVP of the WWE in 2023. Wow. You're on a 30. Go. MVP, no, I, but uh, to expand on that, he's definitely top two or three. I mean, he gets the biggest reactions. His pairing with Rhea Ripley is probably one of the best things they have going on television based on ratings, numbers. The fact that Judgment Day merchandise is selling well has to, a lot to do with the fact that he came from literally nowhere. I take nothing away from what he did with his father, but who thought Dominic Mysterio was anything other than a smiling punk kid who was going to ride his daddy's coattails, and now he proved he can get nuclear heat and hit his recent NXT title loss, or excuse me, the North American title loss, he showed that he can actually go in the ring without any BS bullshit. He can go with a clean finish. He's not MVP. You can't take that when you look at someone like an L.A. Knight or the fact that Roman is still a big name. CM Punk is their number one merch seller now. He's been in the company for like three weeks. But that doesn't take anything away. If you're going to put a top three, top four, he is definitely on there. He is one of the biggest stars they have. He will be a future champion, be it mid-card. I don't know how how late they're going to wait, if, assuming he can bulk up a little bit, put the world title on him. But if it, to say pure MVP, he's the best thing they've got going, no. he's. I would argue he's the best heel they've got going right now because Roman is not fully heelish with the way the bloodline fell apart. And the fact that Dominic's, what's the thing called? Oh, yeah, he's on TV regularly and wrestles more than once a year. But, no, Dominic's not the MVP. Oh, champ. Nice job, buddy. Wow. Woo, Joe. Woo, 12 it's points. It's on, wow. brother. It's on. There's, there's four so players we're... here. Dan is the champion, and he's holding on that belt tight. After he dethroned Phil, who was, like, a, the longest reigning champion. Joe, you think you're ready for this? I don't know. Well, hey, time will tell, right? Joe, did you get training in radio? Because you got the radio voice. Got to give you some credit well, there, pal. Well, I did go to broadcasting school, and I had learned how to get rid of my ass because I'm from Boston. So, yes. Connecticut school? Can I, no, Northeast Broadcasting. Boys oh, nice. Street in Boston. There you go. Nice. I, I got to say, you and Phil got two incredible radio voices for sure. Hey, that's what it's all about, right? Yeah. My <laughs> colleague says I have a radio face, but... <laughs> 
You yeah, t- I well, got a no. face for radio. Phil. And a voice for television. I got you. <laughs> <laughs> Phil, everybody who sees your face knows you're a good-looking guy. Can't You know, you can't be denied. It's not like you're looking at Bruce. You know what I mean? It's, you know. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, All he's right, a Joe. damn handsome man. <laughs> All right. You're up, buddy. You're on the 30. What's Go. The, what, what's the question again? What's the question again? Is Dirty Dominic Mysterio the MVP of the WWE this year? Yes or no? Explain to us okay. why. All right. Dominic Mysterio is not the MVP of 2023. Reason being is because he's in a group faction called the Judgment Day. Now, don't get me wrong. Dominic Mysterio has grown up in a WWE ring. He's been involved with the Eddie Guerrero, Rey Mysterio feuds, the child custody thing. His family, he bleeds, eats, whatever, WWE. He's not the MVP because, well, he's in the Judgment Day. That's why. We've all seen this before with The Shield, Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, uh, Dean Ambrose, well, John Moxley, we should say. So right now, Dominic Mysterio, no doubt about it, is money. He grabs the mic. No one likes him. He's a great heel. He can do a lot of things in the ring. He's a great worker, that's for sure. But he doesn't fit that wrestling mentality that we all think about. He's a guy who spent, what, all but an hour in jail, and he must have uh, ran the gangs in there rampant. So, you know, you you look at Dominic Mysterio, and you could probably say to yourself, well, you know, he's good. But is he an MVP? Absolutely not. Not this year, anyways. He's got a long way to go. He's got to bulk up. But talent-wise, Dominic can work. He can work the crowd. He is. We talked about this yesterday on Wrestling Remembered. He is exactly where he needs to be right now. He's getting that training. He's doing what he needs to do to work the crowds, fill the seats. I mean, look at him. He comes out. People are booing by the time he even grabs the microphone. Dominic Mysterio, not the MVP. Well done, Joe. Well done. Oh, oh, we got a tie, that. bro. Look at this Uh-oh. magic. Wow. And they say this show is rigged. How dare they? Phil, oh my God. the best looking guy in broadcasting right there. <laughs> you know, Phil, I expect for Christmas a uh, special gift. Considering I saved, for that. I saved your life. You did. In, in mid-November. I really I be, did. I could wow. be scratching my nether regions right now. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You wow. you can have crabs all over your house right now. They're in the oh walls, God. ceilings. God knows. You and what the Lord were with me, you. Mike. You and the Lord were with me. I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm very. I was very thankful at Thanksgiving. You could be pissing green right now, buddy. That's all I know. All right, Phil. A minute thirty. Go. Dominic's up there. Maybe not most valuable player. Maybe most villainous player right now. Um, his, obviously I think his, his, his colleagues think enough of him because it's my understanding that CM Punk's first opponent coming back on the, on the, um, on the house circuit is going to be Dominic. So obviously if someone like CM Punk sees something in Dominic and wants to work with them, he sees him as a great foil and ultimately, uh, and as, as our experts on the panel said, you know, Dominic is only really as strong as his foils. And as strong as his family. So within the context of the group, he's doing remarkable things. And we can't deny, if, if we judge on booze, if we judge on audible hate, he is, he is by far the uh, most despised uh, person on television right now. But, you know, I think he's got a long way to go. He's got the Power Ranger suit on still. He's still trying to find <laughs> his way, you know. Mullets still get a lot of heat, so I, I think that's great. But you know we'll really get a, a we'll really get to see him at his best when he breaks out. He's I don't think he's intercontinental title material yet. He's certainly serving a great purpose. Uh, he's kind of a unique character too, and I, and I think that that opposite heat that he gets from his dad, who's who's just uh, on the opposite end of the spectrum, is a great contrast. And how can you and how can you not have heat if you're turning against your father? I mean, it's just unbelievable. So um, you know, well done, he claims Phil. To have well done, Fred. buddy. Phil, looking to regain that title, Ooh, boy. Look at, Woof. Look at this guy. Whoa. I know. I know what title uh, Dominic sh- should have. What's it's that? the European Championship. Oh, that's good. Considering it's defunct <laughs> right now, right? Maybe the Western <laughs> State uh, Heritage. Title. The Heritage. <laughs> yeah. Player. Oh, got a fan club out there. The players. What do you call it? The I players' do. bunnies out there. What are they called? Playmates. Players. Playmates. 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 Yes, man. Benny, Benny, did you ever think any point in your life that you would have playmates now from doing these shows? No, no, I have, I have you to thank for that. No, 
Well, thank you for that. So I'll, I'll have to send you a gift as well, even thank though you. I didn't avoid <laughs> the clap. You. Thank you so much. <laughs> Player, I want to see you do well, dude, because when I write you tomorrow, I want to be like you're the champion. I'm kind of rooting for you, man. Got the fans out there. All right. You're under 30. Go. Is Dominic the MVP? No, absolutely not. Not even close. And I, I said something to somebody the other day that, you know, if Dominic's name was Dominic Jones and he showed up at the Performance Center, he'd be, you know, he'd be bagging groceries at Kroger's or driving driving an Amazon truck. Um, he solely got the opportunity because Ray Mysterio is his dad. And I'm going to qualify that here in a second. Um, and I would say that really, I mean, the MVP of WWE – is right next to him in Rhea Ripley, you know, by far and away. It's not even close. Right. Um, and I think, I mean, you talk about, you know, he, he Dominic is getting the rub uh, on screen from Rhea Ripley, and uh, maybe he's getting the rub off this, off screen. Hopefully, he's getting lucky. But um, <laughs> wow, wow. Uh, now, after all that dissing <laughs> on Dominic, I, I will I will say that he has done a great job uh, t- uh, taking advantage of what he's been given. I mean, he, he's done phenomenal with Judgment Day. His his rings in ring skills have I mean in the last couple of years they've really Im- improved substantially. I mean he's he's come a long way from being Rey Mysterio's tag team partner. So I mean I have to give you know it, it's one thing yeah I mean nepotism and everything but the door was open and he took the ball and he ran with it. So I mean to that extent I give the kid a lot of credit and I, I do see in the future great things happening for Dominic Mysterio. I think he's he's going to be a name for many many years. Well done, player. Wow. Good All first right. round, boys. Again, I'll say this every week for anyone that watches The 30, which is becoming one of the more popular shows. What these guys do every day or every Thursday is very, very difficult. They do not know what the question is, and it could be anything. And considering what genre of wrestling they watch or what years they watch, it even becomes more and more difficult. Question number two, boys. Eric Bischoff believes the outcome of an AEW storyline will become a career killer. There's been a lot of speculation regarding the devil angle since it's the inception with fans and pundits speculating on the mass figure to be everyone from Punk, who we know now is not a viable option, to Adam Cole, Brick Baker, Wardlow, Roderick Strong, and even MJF himself. But at this point, at least according to Eric Bischoff, it already does it matter? It's a career killer, he said bluntly. It is so anticlimactic at this point. Whoever's behind the mass is going to suffer as a result because it's been so poorly constructed. Is Eric Bischoff right or is he wrong? Joe. Uh oh. You're up first. This oh is boy. a tough question. Not the easiest yep. one to go a minute and 30 with. You're on a 30. Go. All right, so the devil. The devil is, um, I don't know what to tell you about this, but the devil is not a killer of a wrestler. It's going to be a company killer. I hate to say that because they are dropping the ball with this. I don't know what it is with AEW. I, You know, you can watch them one week, and it's unbelievable. If it's off the charts, but the next week, the production and everything else is just off. This angle with the devil last night with Hangman Page at 9.05, at night, you know, you, you look at it, and it's not just one guy. It's like a whole bunch of guys. So like, what is going on here? So I think what they're doing right now is they're trolling us. They are trying to figure out who we think it is or who we don't think it is. Obviously, it's not CM Punk. I don't think it's Britt Baker. It's definitely not Adam Cole. Um, Jack Perry filing trademarks left and right. I swear to God, the ball's going to be dropped with that because they're probably going to let him go. Who knows who the devil is? And basically, right now, it's going to come down to, who cares? At this point, they can ride this all the way to Wembley Stadium in August for their big show, and, you know, it could be whoever. I just think right now it's so worn out. It's not being written right. It's not being presented right. They could do a much better job even for AEW production. I mean, who knows? It could be referee Aubrey Hebner for all I know. I don't know. Nobody knows. And that's just it. We're not getting these codes or these things or these little hints. We're just getting nothing. And that's exactly what's going to happen when he takes off his mask. Nothing. Wow. Nice round, Joe. Hey, Phil, got a question for you. Yes. If they unmask the devil and it's sky blue, are you happy? 
<laughs> they have to go all the way and take it all off, man. Absolutely. Yeah. Man, I love oh, Sky man. Blue, dude. I, 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 oh. She so lights does up our life. Cameraman, apparently. What's that? I said, so does their cameraman, apparently. You ever notice? No I've never seen a match framed around a particular body part than whenever Sky Blue wrestles. There is a cameraman at ringside, and that's his job. Get that, get get her assets in focus. Don't you think that she should get a raise, Dan? Because those pictures are off the charts. Off the charts. I would never think a wrestler with the name Sky Blue could get over, but this girl has oh, yeah. found a way, and I got to tell you, oh, yeah. keep her on screen Yep. One and a half hours out of the two hours they're on because I I told you I love that Tony Storm match from last week. That oh. was mint. That was oh. gold. Oh. It was before, gold. It before was we gold. had Sky Blue, we had Misty Blue, and I understand that she uh, made her way into uh, maybe some soft porn. So uh, I hope she this probably. is well. Maybe I shouldn't say I hope it's not her future, but uh, hopefully it wasn't soft for her co-star. <laughs> <laughs> Cha Ching, give that man a point. Ding ding. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Phil, you're on the 30. You know the question. I do. Bring it home, sir. I'm just waiting for All the right. clock. Just give me a second. Okay, you're on the 30. Go. Um, Jack Perry is actually a uh, still, I think, a viable person to be the devil. Whether this helps the cause or not, I don't know. Whether their intention is to put the storyline over uh, for the sake of ratings, I don't know. Maybe they're trying to send a message with this. Jack Perry, of course, uh, before his infamous backstage fight with CM Punk, um, slammed somebody in the windshield of a car, okay? That sort of was the gimmick. That was sort of the, the onset of the, of the argument and the feud. And I think CM Punk said that he should have been more careful. They should have used some gimmick glass or something like that. And most recently, the devil did the very same move on, um, on the windshield. So I don't know. There's some parallelisms there, and it kind of makes me think a little bit, maybe it is he, you know, and maybe this trademarking thing is just a way to get people off, off the trail, off the scent. But, um, you know, it's interesting. Jungle Boy was a moniker that used to be used by Jimmy Superfly Snooka back in the day, too, and it's, it's a shame he didn't. He was a real Jungle Boy. This guy... Love it. Love it. I don't think so, yeah. You know, unless it's Luke Perry under the mask, I don't know, man. <laughs> Boy, hello. Highly unlikely, as Gorilla would say. Um, I think it's going to get a pop no matter what. Um, and again, the intention behind it, I don't know. Is it to boost the ratings? Is it to kind of propel this feud, this little inside baseball sort of thing, which has now become really outside of baseball, given the social media? Is it a little slap to punk, maybe? Well done, I don't Phil. Know. Well done. It could be anything, yeah. I got to tell you, though, I keep thinking when that mask comes off, they can't go anywhere with this without screwing this up, I think, at this point. Like, it doesn't matter who's under that mask. It's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm rooting for you, kid. You're on a 30. Go. All right. So a, a, a guy walks into the office of a talent scout, and the, the talent <laughs> scout says, what, what do you do? And he said, uh, I sing out my ass. And he said, what? You sing out your ass? He said, yeah, I sing through my ass. And he goes, oh, I got to see this. So the guy, you know, pulls his pants down and, and shits all over the floor. And the talent scout says, well, what, what are you doing? He said, well, I had to clear my throat before I sing. So that's, uh, to, to, to me, that's, when, every time Eric Bischoff opens his mouth, that's, I think of that joke. I think you know, also Charlie Brown's teacher, the minute he, you, you hear, wah, 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 wah. I, I, the guy just loves to hear himself talk. And this is from a man who, uh, in WCW, was the master of angles that were introduced, you know, played out, and then just disappeared or just lingered too long where when the payoff eventually came, it really didn't mean anything. And that's what's happening here. I mean, they, they should have delivered the payoff way before now. It's just at this point, I, I think, I mean, who, it could be Jack Perry. I mean, could be, could be Ric Flair. I mean, he did he did the Black Scorpion thing, right? Um, but I, I just I think that it's with, with these angles, timing is everything. And um, you know, people have a very, and especially in this day and age, people have a very short attention span. Um, they want their yeah. payoff immediately. They don't want to wait for it. And I think they they've already missed the mark. And I think at this point, nobody really cares. Well uh, done, there, buddy. We got a tight race here, champ. These numbers are not insurmountable to someone like you. You could blow by these like a jackrabbit racing a tortoise. But 
lot of great answers from the three previous experts. So I don't know, you know, yep. where you could go with this. But you're on to 30. Go. Well, like they say about blind squirrels and broken clocks, uh, Eric Bischoff, I hate to say it, I actually agree with him on this one. There is absolutely nothing AEW can do when that devil pulls the mask off that is not going to disappoint at least a large chunk of their fan base. That could be the ghost of Andre the Giant under there, and no one is going to care. There's nothing you can do to be, as big as you've been building this storyline that is going to reach that capacity. If it's Jack Perry, ooh, yay, everyone will love that until the very next week when CM Punk's on, on a show and crushes them in the ratings. It'll be, you know, uh, Adam Cole. Well, great, you just broke up your most successful tag team. It's been MJF the whole time. Okay, so his whole face turn and big storyline about his Jew boy bullying was for nothing. It's Britt Baker. Who gives a shit? She hasn't been on TV in six months. There's absolutely nothing you can do that's going to matter. Uh, and honestly, the the goons, if you pay attention, their body shapes keep changing. So I think this is a legitimate black scorpion condition. It's either some local talent or some random people from the locker room, and they don't even know who's going to be under there yet. I don't think they've decided. I don't think they know. I, honestly, at this point, Eric Bischoff's right. I don't think people are going to care. Is it going to kill AEW? No. If TNA can survive with a tenth of their money, AEW is not going to die no matter how bad this angle is. But this will just be another nail that people will point to five years from now and go, man, remember how bad that company was, especially when it, the, the devil is the counter to build up to the what's going to be the biggest well done, World Rumble champ. in decades? Well done. All right. I it's know who's race. under the mask. I think I know who's under the mask. Who is it? The shock master. Oh, boy. Imagine <laughs> that. Fred Ottman. <laughs> Fred Ottman. Wow. That'd be better than anything that's going on right now. I mean, if this guy yeah. disappeared, we never saw this thing again. Nobody would say anything. <laughs> what if it was Seth Rollins? Yo. <laughs> no, Whitey Bulger. <laughs> Imagine there if it was Whitey go. Bulger? Oh, man. Whitey Whitey Bulger, yeah. There you go. All right, guys. Now we're telling. Question number three. AEW leadership unaware of the WWE's reported negotiations with Warner Brothers Discovery. In a shocking twist that could send shockwaves through the wrestling world, it seems that Warner Brothers Discovery might be considering swapping out AEW for WWE Raw. The battle for TV supremacy just got hotter than a steel cage match on a summer day. Warner Brothers Discovery has been the proud home of AEW showcasing their hit shows Dynamite, Rampage, and Collision. They even had an exclusive deal with Tony Khan's wrestling empire that led to the demise of AEW Dark on YouTube. But hold on to your championship belts because the rumors started swirling that Warner Brothers Discovery might be eyeing a fling with WWE Raw. Say it ain't so. Does this mean the end of AEW? We had the champ say that the devil costume will not end AEW, but this certainly can be something that destroys this five-year rookie organization. Phil, you're up first on a 30. Go. Great question with some complexities here, certainly. Well, if, if WWE does make that jump to WB, I think in all likelihood they'd be taken off Monday nights because of conflicts with other companies within the umbrella and potentially conflicts with Monday night football. So uh, I think our beloved Monday night Raw might lose that Monday aspect. And that's really been ingrained in our in our, our hearts and our, our souls for, for decades now. I mean, 30 years, if you can imagine that, you know, it's amazing. 31 years going on. Um, and, and wrestling fans are creatures of habit, you know. That, of course, would open up the USA Network, potentially. And uh, why would they not want to put a wrestling product on their network? And why not the second best uh, organization in the business now, arguably? Uh, AEW. And uh, so I think that is a potential. Every light side has a dark side. So I think they, if they make the jump to Monday night and really capital, capitalize upon this whole ingrained habit, this habitual nature, we're all tuning in Monday night. I mean, it's second nature. I know what day it is on Monday. I don't know any other day, but Monday I know. Uh, I think that would help AEW. Uh, WWE, of course, will benefit no matter what. I mean, you know, they could be shown on PBS and still uh, do extremely well. So I don't think it's going to harm any organization. I think it'll shake things up. I think it'll kind of 
kind of uh, traumatize the wrestling fans for a little bit. But otherwise, uh, it, I think it's going to inject some new life into the business. Well done, and Phil. Ultimately, well yeah. done. <laughs> Player. Wow. Woo. <sighs> Get your bearings, pal. I hope you have a joke for this one. You're under 30. <laughs> Go. Well, I mean, the, does this have a good chance of happening? Absolutely, yes. And I would say that it, while it would hurt AEW from a, a financial perspective, look, Tony Khan is going to operate regardless of, of his financial situation until, you know, until daddy pulls the checkbook. I, I could see him, uh, I could see him going to his, I think it's, what, what uh, network is uh, my, my 600 pound life on? I think A&E, um, you know, maybe, maybe he can uh, uh, recruit Dr. Nozarden as, as a heel manager. Hello, how you all doing? You know what I'm talking about? Christ, oh my God. You're supposed to lose 30 pounds this month. Um, so, no, I mean, it, 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 he'll go on the fucking Fred Flintstone channel. It doesn't matter. He's going to, he wants to be a wrestling promoter. He's going to be a wrestling promoter. I think the, I think the money part of it, it this is a hobby. I mean, my, my brother shoots off model rockets. Um, on on the weekends, and this is this is Tony Han's. Han, I mean, it's his passion, it's his love, but it's it's a hobby, and I mean, it's very nice when you can do something. And I mean, it's like play, playing Monopoly with your next door neighbor. You go over his house, and uh, you win, and he goes, "Oh, wait a minute!" And he goes in the closet, and he has like seven other Monopoly boards, and he pulls all the money out, and he says, "I'm still in." You know that that's that's Tony Khan. Well done, player. Well done. Man, sometimes I'm annoy you guys. I don't even know how you guys answer some of these questions. Champ! Yes, sir. No one... You know, this is your wheelhouse, dude. You can talk wrestling. Boy, I got to tell you. Smooth right out, of your, right out of your throat. You're on a 30. Go! Well, you got to think about it in the ray of TV deals. What killed WCW wasn't bad management. It was the lack of a TV deal. If Turner decided to keep WCW on contract, WCW Nitro would still be on. I think it's important to note, too, what our previous voice said, and that's that Khan, or Nick Khan, that is, had said that he'd be willing to relocate television shows to different days. So if WWE does go over to Warner and wants to be bumped off Monday night, Tuesday Night Raw, Wednesday Night Raw, sure, have that. I think one of the telling points is also that WB threw a lot of money <clears throat> excuse me, at AEW specifically to give CM Punk a Saturday show, and they said CM Punk's involvement with the company was paramount on WB talking to the WWE again. So you have what is one of the bigger networks looking at, and they said WWE wants about $400 million. So that would be huge. They're not going to get that from Warner Brothers Discovery, but they can use them as leverage against other companies because they'll get more from Warner Brothers Discovery than they will from USA. <laughs> but yeah, absolutely, if WWE comes to Warner Brothers Discovery, AEW's got to go somewhere else. And if they can't, then I don't care how much money Tony Khan throws at them. Without a TV deal, you're done. TNA survived being on the travel channel history of Goldfish. That's all you need is one channel and a few fans to watch. But I think it's important to note, and, and like I said, is that CM Punk is kind of at the heart of this deal. So at the end of the day, this entirely falls on Tony Khan's failure as a leader. Well done, champ. Well done. Wow. Wow. This is going to be tough, man. Joe. I'm rooting for wow. you, kid. I'm rooting for I'm you. I'm trying. As they say, change is inevitable, except from a vending machine, right? All right. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> oh, you know what? Nice. Get him on the clock. Get a point. You're on a 30. <laughs> Go. <laughs> All right. Change is a coming. That's right, folks. Uh, breaking news. Yeah. WWE is in talks with WB. And the main reason why is enter CM Punk. That's the main reason why I think they they nailed CM Punk to come back here. Uh, we have a meteorite steal that is going down to the wire. All this stuff should have been sewn up months ago, but it's not. Why? And as uh, uh, Dan said, $400 million is the big figure, right? That's what they want. So can they get that money? We don't know yet. But what about this? What if AEW does move to Discovery and Raw goes to TNT or TBS? That's the change that's probably probably going to be in, inevitable. It has to be. I mean, CM Punk is the main reason. I, I hate to keep saying this over and over, but there's a reason why CM Punk is back. 
and this this is all is going down to the fact that they're going to move. They're not going to be on USA Network anymore because SmackDown is moving off of Fox to the USA Network. So we might get a Monday night SmackDown and a Friday night Raw. Who knows? Times are a changing. This is the business of how it is now. This is what happens when Vince McMahon steps aside and you get Endeavor and TKO Holdings coming in here. Triple H looking for that best offer possible right now. And they were looking at Amazon. They were looking at Disney. They were looking at all these other places. And here we go with the hammer with WB, and he is going to stick it to Tony Khan. Nice job, Joe. Man, we're friggin' in a deadlock here. The Whoa. Everybody is tight. And unfortunately, question number four is the first elimination question. Let me ask you guys, were you expecting any of these questions going into tonight? Hell no. Nope. Not at no. all. Because this one I don't think any of you would be ready for. Oh, first no. elimination, question number four. Who meant more to pro wrestling industry? I want this judged on Mike's skills, Matt's skills, back of the baseball card, and overall influence on the industry coming off of a Monty and a Faro gimmick that we used to do head-to-head. We've decided to put Bruno Sammartino up against the king, Jerry Lawler. Player? You get to start this one off, big guy. Who meant more to the pro wrestling industries on the four criterias that I've laid out? You're on a 30. Go. Well, I mean, you can't discredit what Jerry Lawler did in Memphis. I mean, the guy was literally the king of Memphis for years and years. And when you think about the, you know, a, a very a relatively small city like Memphis, uh, that the fact that they were able to on every every Monday night Mid South Coliseum, I think the capacity was maybe ten or eleven thousand people. I mean, for we're talking years. We're not talking like six months. Years. The guy was able to pack the place. I mean, uh, consistently. He he rarely left. Um, and you know whether it was with Bill Dundee, uh, Austin Idol, uh, who else? Uh, Jimmy Valiant. You name it. I mean, give the guy his due. But there were. Bruno San Martino is a once in a generation uh, person. I mean, you talk about yeah, okay. Let's Mike skills no, uh, Matt work no. Um, did any of that matter? Absolutely not. Because here's the bottom line: when Bruno faced Toro Tanaka or Blackjack Mulligan or uh, Crusher Verdu or anyone at Madison Square Garden, what did you have? You had twenty two thousand people who were screaming at the top of their lungs for their and and jerry lawler great wrestler bruno bruno was larger than life bruno wasn't just their 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 favorite wrestler bruno was their hero he transcended wrestling and he and he lived the gimmick and he carried himself like a a true champion in and out case that play a good case for bruno san martino champ gotta get out of this first round of elimination (laughs) benny came hard we know he's a fan of Bruno. Gave a good case. That's what she said. You're up, buddy. You're on a 30. Go. <laughs> well, you said it comes down to the numbers. And when you're talking about Bruno versus Jerry Lawler, the number that I think is most important is 187. Betty wants to talk about selling out Memphis. Great. Every Monday, Bruno San Martino sold out Madison Square Garden 187 times. Second place, Billy Joel. Billy Joel needs to continue to sell out every concert in his venue until he is 93 to catch wow. up to Bruno. Not going to wow. happen. I also have to look at history in the sense of who would who would and wouldn't exist. If history had never heard of Jerry Lawler, the WWE <laughs> is still a $9 billion company and wrestling is still as big as it is today. If the history had never heard of Bruno San Martino half of the people currently wrestling today are unemployed because wrestling is not nearly as big as it is. That's just simple fact. You have to look at their impact on history. Jerry Lawler wins in the Mike category. He's probably one of the best of his generation. But like Benny said, Bruno is a not just a once in a generation. He is a once in 10 lifetime talent. Bruno is a god among men. He is the kind of wrestler that people look up to. No one broke into Jerry Lawler's house to learn wrestling, but There's Larry Zbysko breaking into Bruno San Martino's house to talk about wrestling. Bruno also wins on the personal standpoint, because I'm pretty sure he's never been accused of some of the horrible things Jerry Lawler's been fired for. And, of course, uh, 
on commentary, I don't think Bruno would be making the puppy jokes, but no, Bruno, 100% hands down. He is well the done, biggest champ. name and most important well name in done. history. Wow. Joe. Uh-oh. Unbelievable. That robe in wow. the back of your man cave. It's hanging hey. there. I know which way you're going to bend. It's two signed. very good it's cases signed. for Bruno San Martino. You're up, Joe. Go. All right, Bruno San Martino, Mike Skills. Uh, you know, it, it is what it is back in those days, you know what I'm saying? But we cannot compare Jerry the King Lawler or Bruno San Martino, two separate entities altogether, two separate talents, all that stuff. But, you know, I got a Bruno San Martino sign roll behind me, so I'm going to go with Bruno San Martino. Here's a couple of numbers I jotted down. 2,803 days was Bruno San Martino's first reign from 63 to 71. That's unbelievable. That comes out to, uh, what, seven years, eight months in one day? Yep, you do the math right there. Look How the about math. the second reign? How about a combined total reign of 4,040 days? 4,040 days. That is unbelievable. Right there, you're talking about almost 7,000 days of reigns for Bruno San Martino to carry a company, to represent that company, to defend his title. And as, as um, D- uh, Dan said, selling out Madison Square, Square Garden. Let's not talk about the Boston Garden, the Philadelphia Spectrum, the Baltimore Civic Center, and all the places in between, the high school gymnasiums and all the armories and stuff. Bruno San Martino was the most unbelievable champion to ever be have bestowed upon to carry a company. You know, they all go down with the ethnicity of Bruno San Martino. He lived his life to the fullest because where he came off those mountains and his mother protected them from all the wars that happened in Italy. This guy is a storybook, and it's a storybook ending. Greatest wrestler of all time, well Bruno done, San Joe. Martino. Well done. Good job. Oh, Oof. this is this is dicey. Dicey. Phil. You got to get past 61 to survive to get into the final round. Right now, you're on the 30. Go. Yeah, we talk about numbers. We talk about the back of baseball cards. Um, I believe the year was 1959, and Bruno San Martino was legitimately one of the strongest natural athletes in the entire world. He he broke a bench press barrier back in the day. He was in the 600-pound range, which is just, even then, even now is crazy, but back then was unheard of, you know. They say if a spaceship landed, and they were given a lineup of people, and they say if Jerry Lawler and Bruno were in the same lineup, I think they, and they were asked, who's the wrestler here? Who's the champ? I think universally everyone would point to Bruno. You know, both guys 5'10", um, Bruno, 275, 280 in his prime. He just looked the part. As far as styles go, Bruno was very realistic. People can say he's a brawler and everything else, but when push comes to shove, is a fist drop off the top rope going to win uh, uh, realistically a fight, or is a bear hug going to potentially take someone out? You know. Um, so in terms of mat work, pretty even. Bruno certainly more realistic style, I'd say. Mike Skills, Jerry the King Lawler. Bruno couldn't go on to David Letterman and do that or have that kind of Andy Kaufman feud. But Bruno could connect with people, obviously. Beyond Italians, all ethnicities love Bruno. So he had that special connection. Wasn't a lot of sizzle, but definitely a lot of steak. Lawler was great in Phil, in, great in job. Wow. This is no. – look at the numbers. Oh. The champ is in the running. Then we got the player that looks like wow. Joe and Phil – you're on your way to the land of misfit toys, boys. Good job. Well done. Uh, thanks. But again, just <laughs> we'll be not seeing enough. Bruce. Always Good luck, guys. Again. I'm Oof. coming. Care. Good stuff. Wow. Man, that hurt. Those were some good rounds with good answers. Sometimes yeah. I feel like people don't deserve to go to land of misfit toys after all their hard work because they're just fantastic right. answers. So we've got both co hosts of one of the top-rated podcasts in the pro wrestling industry, Dan and Benny in the Ring. Good friends who work together to make a great product. But in this, my friends, you must be enemies. (laughs) Are you ready for the championship round? Ready. Let's do it. The Iron Claw premieres next week. One of the characters plays Lance Von Erich, played by the great MJF. Many say MJF is the ge- this generation's Rowdy Roddy Piper. 
Please tell me what was Roddy Piper's greatest match and greatest Piper's pit and why. Benny, being that you're not the champion, you're going to start this round. Are you ready? Yes. Ready. You're on the 30. Go. I'm going to say as far as <clears throat> greatest match, I think you have to go past the WWF and go to Mid-Atlantic right before he came to WWF and the rivalry that we, he had with uh, Greg Valentine. That dog collar match they had, I think it was in Charlotte, where uh, Piper legitimately um, had some uh, damage, ear damage, I believe. I believe it, it was permanent that you know these guys beat the shit out of each other so bad that... Um, and it's funny because when Piper came into the WWF, at first he was a manager. I'm not sure if it was because of uh, injuries or because of uh, a no-compete clause, but one of his first guests on the pit was uh, Greg Valentine. And um, you could see that there was a little bit of tension. And, I mean, if you knew wrestling history or, you know, you, you knew what happened in, in the uh, Carolinas, you could see that tension, and then they embraced, and then it was all over. But, you know, P Piper's pit, geez. I mean, everybody's going to say Superfly Jimmy Snuka, but, uh, and which was, it was shocking, shocking, unbelievable, led to, you know, led to so much. But my favorite Piper's Pit is with none other than the pride of Columbus, Ohio, Frankie <laughs> Williams, because he said, I'm Columbus, Ohio. So he wasn't from Columbus. He fucking was Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> and incidentally, his real name wasn't Frankie Williams, and he was actually from Cleveland. But he was great. Wow. 14 for one round. That should get you this championship title. But unfortunately, in the wings <sighs> lies your partner. Damn. And he's ready. Dan, you're on a 30. It's either retain or go home. Go. Well, I'm going to disagree with Benny on both of those. The first thing I would say Piper's best match, and not, mostly because of the one, the quality, and two, what it meant to the history of wrestling, is his match with Bret Hart at WrestleMania 8. Not only was that an absolute clinic and one of the best technical matches of that era because of wrestling shifting away from some of that style, but also it cemented Bret Hart as a star in the world. He just beat one of the greatest wrestlers on earth for the Intercom continental title in front of the largest pay-per-view crowd in history at the time and you cannot think of a bigger moment in his career to pass the torch it was phenomenal as for piper's pit i hate to sound cliche but i'm sticking with the wwf i am picking piper's pit with andre the giant and hulk hogan when andre the giant challenged for the title at wrestlemania 3 not only did that cement what is, in my opinion, the greatest moment in the history of professional wrestling, Hulk Hogan body slamming Andre, but you have the moment, the moment to build what is the greatest pay-per-view, really the most instrumental and historical pay-per-view in wrestling history. And as they say, sometimes you cannot script greatness. When Andre ripped the shirt and actually ripped the cross too, Hogan's bleeding, Piper catches it and just real so calmly in, in, in the crazy voice that Piper usually has, so calmly, Hulk, you're bleeding. Bam. Andre is serious. You have just cemented a mega heel, a mega feud. Wow, no good one else run, Dan. But unfortunately, your partner, Benny, has stripped you of the world title. Ooh. We've got a new champion. We'll see you next week. The player in the house.